Howdy! Welcome to Star Wars Rebellion, Guide to Playing as the Imperials. Because let me tell you one thing, Impin ain't easy man. Believe me, I have played dozens upon dozens of games against various different opponents. And as the Imperials, you have to be able to adapt to what the Rebels are doing. And that's not always easy, you know. Different players have different strategies, some like the turtles, some like to attack a lot. Ugh. And having to react to all these different, you know, tactics and strategies, it isn't, isn't always easy. So I'm just going to run through, well this is going to be quite a detailed video, but I'm going to run through all the different sort of strategies, tactics, maneuvers I've come up with throughout the course of many, many games of playing Star Wars Rebellion. I'm only going to be considering the Rise of the Empire expansion, so bear that in mind as well. With all that said, let us begin with board positioning. So if you take a look here, this is a board setup for a game that I'm about to play tomorrow. I like to position my fleet such that I have three to four sort of major defensive key locations. And then the other three or so planets are completely vulnerable to attack. The thing is, you do not have enough starting units to fully cover all of your starting locations. It's just not possible. You're better off accepting that you are going to lose one or two planets at the beginning of the game. Depending on how the Rebels play, of course. So with that said, three to four defensive locations is, is a good idea. And I like to have at least a minimum of three fighters in the sky and an assault carrier for a key defensive location. This allows you to pull off these two cards in tandem. So the Rebel Starting Fleet, they have, they have three fighters. So if you have four fighters in the system, that's great, because you can do Swarm Tactics turn one and deal two damage. I mean, that's, this is one of the strongest cards that you can get for the space battles. So it's really powerful. Do not waste this. But if you have at least three units, uh, three fighters, sorry, then turn one, you can play Reinforcements, gain an extra TIE Fighter, and prevent two Black Hits. If done correctly, this should allow you to have more fighters in the sky than your opponent for the second round of combat, if the Rebel player or you choose not to retreat and have that second round. Then on the ground, I'd like to have a minimum of five ground units for my key locations. So here, I have an AT-80, ATST and three Stormtroopers, two ATSTs and three Stormtroopers, then one ATST, two assault tanks, two stormtroopers. That is, you know, reasonably defended. To be honest, you could, you, in this location here, you can still lose the ground. Like, if they send everything in, you're still losing the ground battle here. And even here, it's not looking too good, to be honest. Yeah, they could still take the ground in any of these systems if, if the rebel player wanted to. They would suffer heavy losses, though. That's so probably not in their best interests because rebel units are more valuable than imperial ones. The reason for this is because imperials tend to produce units at a much faster rate than the rebels. Therefore, a rebel storm, a rebel trooper is more valuable than an imperial stormtrooper. Now, my Death Star on the construction, I've placed it in Tatooine for this game. Generally speaking, the best place is Dagobah. And the reason for that is because you want to block off Utapau. Blocking this off is really important in most cases. I've played so many games that I like to mix it up a bit. So I've gone Tatooine this time. But, like I said, majority of, majority of the time, just stick it on Dagobah. Seriously, just stick it on Dagobah. Um, the other good thing about sticking on Dagobah is that you have units in the system already, so that if... If you suspect the, uh, the Rebel player is going to play um, Seek Yoda, you can, you've got the, your capture ready. You can just capture them, capture Luke immediately, because you've already got units in Dagobah. Or you should do anyway. So that's why Dagobah is a really good starting location, for those two reasons. And the camera is just... 
going haywire. Apologies for that, don't know what happened there. Camera just kind of blanked out on me. Oh, easy. Anyway, so that's starting positions for you. Next up, let's run through all of the missions, I think. It's another, let's put the next best place to go to. So I'm going to just put this on the tripod. And let's just get some space here so I can just very easily talk about this without the camera falling over, hopefully. Yeah, that, that'll have to do. Okay, let's begin. So let's run through the starting missions. You have Capture Rebel. This is good, obviously, obviously this is good. Like, some of the best Imperial missions require you to have a captured leader. So, obviously a good card. You probably don't want to play this turn one. I mean, it depends. But, you know, typically my turn one play is I'll have two leaders on standby, maybe even three, and then I'll either play, you know, Rule by Fear, um, maybe an R&D, probably not R&D though, Rule by Fear, if they have loads of, if they're turtling, go straight in for Gather Intel. If you can draw two probes, play this card. It will, it, it will help you in the mid to late game, honestly. Whenever you get the opportunity to draw two cards off of this, you should play it. Even if it's turn one, you should just play this card, turn one. Eight units in the rubble base, play it. If they got even more, even better, but yeah. Rule by fear, like there's a strategy which involves just playing this every single turn. I don't tend to do that, but I do, I do play it a lot. And it is a good turn one play. Um, obviously in the later stages of the game, it becomes very important to you know, take loyalty off the rebels because they have quite a few, there's a couple of objectives in there that require the rebel player to have X number of loyalty on the board. So that's good for that. Um, with R&D as well, in the late stages of the game, a smart rebel player will try and sabotage your systems which are adjacent to their base. So a combination of R&D and R&D and Rule by Fear allows you to remove those pesky sabotage markers. It is two missions, you're taking two actions for one, but in the late stages of the game it's so important that you're able to deploy your units where you need to place them. R&D, I don't tend to play this so much. Obviously if my opponent's going heavy on sabotage, I will play it. And, um, if the rebel player blocks off my space system so I can't produce Star Destroyers and Assault Carriers, then yeah, I'm going to start digging out those Super Star Destroyers and Interdictors with this card. So those are the main situations where I'll, I'll play this. I don't tend to play at turn one. Um, I might bluff it though. I might... One of, one of my favourite plays, in fact, is um, uh, this guy. Targ. Putting Targ on capture, turn one. Because... It's a good bluff, because most people will think he's on R&D. So if they are assigned to sabotage, if the rebel player has assigned someone to sabotage, and you've got, tar and you've got tag sitting on this, they're probably going to go for one of your um, subjugated systems. And this is sneaky. Getting a capture with this guy is sneaky. Because if you've got Vader on standby, you can, um, you, know, move, you can use him to oppose a mission, maybe, and then bring this guy in for capture, or you can... Use him as a move, move him into a system which has a rebel, um, a rebel leader, and then go for the capture that, which gives you uh, four four dice rolls, which is really good and sneaky. It's one of my favorite plays. Uh, before we go on with the other missions, actually, let's run through the starting action cards. So there's six of them. You get two. Uh, the first one, more dangerous than you realize. This used to be good in the, um, uh, the base set with the expansion rules from the Rise of the Empire. This card is not so good anymore because you can't use it early game. It is good in the late game, I give you that. You know, there are some situations where you, know, you want to have this card in the late game. You can you know, grab, grab three tactics and you, know, you can surprise your opponents with this. It can be good late game, but generally speaking, I, I don't want to see this. I don't want to see this card. Next, Brilliant Admin. This is okay. Um, I used to play this early game, like turn one, but 
uh, I realize that's probably not such a good idea. Now I tend to wait until the late stages of the game. Maybe I'm trying to set up an Imperial Might, and I want to get some extra units on the build queue. Play this then, so that will give you know you can just play this on like you know like Sullust for example, and then on the following turn play your Imperial Might, and you can get another you know an ATAT on the board, which is you know pretty solid. So again, but again, I don't really want to see this. It's not my favorite card. It's not the best. It's not bad though. It's not terrible. Um, next up, it is your destiny. This is a nice insurance card to have against a rescue mission. It's it's nice to have. Um, I think they're better cards that you can start with, but you know I'm not too upset if I draw this. It's it's a nice to have, especially if you're trying to set up like two to three interrogation missions in one turn or something. You know that's a lot. You're a lot more comfortable trying to pull that off if you've got this in your hand with Vader. Track them. When I first saw this card, I thought it was amazing. It is good, don't get me wrong. It is definitely a good card, but in my testing, in my games, I have found it can be a bit hit and miss. There are some games where it's just been completely useless, and then there's been... I've, I've won a game off, off of this card before, so you know it can be amazing. It can be really good. It's, it's definitely one of the better starting ones, starting um, action cards that you can get. Especially if you play this turn one, you play this turn one, you get you get an extra, you get a free attack and an extra movement turn one. That is, you know, that's pretty good. Early promotion. There's a lot of um, debate about this card. People like it, people don't like it. You know, sacrifice to play this card, you have to sacrifice Tarkin's action turn one, which means you've only got three leaders to do stuff on turn one against um, the rebel players. Four, you're an action behind on turn one. In exchange, though, for the rest of the game, you're, you know, barring that nothing else happens, you're one leader ahead until turn five, I want to say. Yes, turn five, turn five. Um, Rebellion is not a game that's won on turn one. Even if you put yourself at a disadvantage turn one, you know, you, you're in a bad situation or whatever because the rebel player has been able to do more stuff than you. You can catch up. This... Rebellion is not decided in turn one most of the time. So, the, the, so early promotion is very much about setting up your mid to late game. It's subtle, I, that's why I like this card. I would much rather prefer to set up my mid to late game and sacrifice my turn one. But that's my opinion, you know. I can totally understand people who, would, you know, who don't like this card. And if you don't like it, just toss it out and hope you get a better one. It's fine as well. And finally, according to my design. I mean, this is amazing. This is, of all the six starting action cards, this is the one I pray I get every single game. It's just so good. Ah, oh, so good. Like, a lot of opponents, um, they like to do a powerful alpha strike turn one with the, Rebel, with the Rebel fleet. Suddenly, you turn the tables. You send Palpatine in to oppose or whatever, drop this card, and wow. You've just stolen three of their dice. One red and two black dice are just removed from their attack pool. For both space and ground for the first round of combat. It's just amazing. The rebel player thinks that they've got a chance of winning that battle. And suddenly you've just turned the tables on them. Losing three dice is a seriously big deal. And not to mention Palpatine is such a good leader. One of your strongest leaders for, um, for dice rerolls. He's got three space rerolls and two ground rerolls. He's solid, solid. Definitely the one card that I want to you know, if I could pick my two starting action cards, I'd pick this every single time. And then probably early promotion, or, you know, track them, or it is your destiny. Maybe one of these three. This one every time, and one of these three. Right, let's go back to our missions then. So I've talked about the starting ones. Let's go through the signature missions next. Detained. This is okay. It's not amazing. Um, I usually like to use this to try and capture Mo Mo Mothma, actually. Mothma is notoriously hard to get because she's often doing build alliance and she's often out of range, just can't reach her. So I like to detain her for a turn and then you know move a fleet in on the next turn to try and capture her. 
Because if you capture Mothma, Mothma and Palpatine are the only two leaders that have, you know, a solid three diplomacy icons. So if you capture Mothma and you just have Palpatine on standby, it becomes very difficult for the rebel player to play Build Alliance. So that's why this is, can be pretty good. Um, in the late stages of the game, it can be good to you know, prevent a key leader from returning to the rebel leader pool. If you're trying to take the base, for example, and they have a lot of ground force, you may want to try and... Or they have a lot of space force, you may want to try and play this card on Admiral Akbar, for example, preventing from going back for your next turn. Moving on, draw them out. Fantastic card design. I really, really like this card. It's, it's so good. As long as the rebel, play, rebel player has at least two leaders on standby, you're guaranteed to pull this off. And this combos very nicely with the action card as well, which goes with Credit's Finest. But yeah, this is a, such a good card, such a good design. It's really good for setting up a capture as well. And yeah, it's just fantastic stuff. It's also good to set up, um, uh, what's it called? Jabba's signature mission, uh, make an example. Because you can, if, if you've got Imperial units in a remote system, play this card there, capture them, and then send them to the pits, basically. Really good card, especially in late game. In the late game, I mean, you, you know, you, that's when the rebel play often has a couple of leaders, you know, hanging around on standby. You can so disrupt them by playing this. Hunt them down. Um, very simple effect, you know, destroy two units, it's good, it's a good card. Um, I like to use this if uh, the Rebel player blockades one of my systems early on. It's also good once you've revealed the base, you know, being able to take out a, an, um, what do you call it, the air, an air speeder or a Corvette is, is solid. It's a solid play. Um, especially those air speeders, they're really annoying with those tow cables and shield generator reusing tow cable shenanigans. It's a good card. Uh, Planetary Conquest, in my opinion, the best Imperial mission in the deck. Just because it's such a game ender, it's such a total game ender if you pull this off. Once you know where the base is, as long as you, they don't have any air units, obviously it depends how well defended it is, but you know, you're sending in you know, an at at an AT-ST and two Stormtroopers, that's pretty heavy firepower. It, the card just wins games, it just wins games, and it's quite easy, to, even without having Vader's on board, you know, assign Vader to this, that's three fists, it's probably going to go through. Really good card. Retrieve the plans. Yeah, this is good. Really good. Um, you know, you get to see your opponent's hand of objectives and take their best one, and put it to the bottom of the deck. They're not going to see it again. Yeah, not much to say really. It's nice that it's a fist mission because rebel players are weak on fists. Imperials are strong on fists. Rebel players are strong on intel eyes and the Imperials are weak on eyes. Collect bounty. All right, this is amazing. It's a one-off, but you can capture anyone. I just use this to capture Mothma usually, but you know, it varies, it varies depending on the game state. I mean, this is an incredibly good mission. It's unexpected as well. You know, the rebel player thinks they're safe and, you know, suddenly you've captured one of their people. It's fun to assign both of these on one turn as well. So, you know, if, if, the, if the regular capture fails, you've got this to capture someone. Solid card. And moving on to diplomacy. Uh, double our efforts. Yeah, I don't like this card. It's okay. It can come in handy, but, uh, yeah, I'm not a fan. Not a fan of it, to be honest. I'm not going to say too much about it. Fear will keep them in line. Okay, this is amazing. This is so good. I try and use this to wipe off um, Rebel Loyalty off the board. Um, you know, this is one of the cards you want to see turn one. You see this card turn one, you're, you're, just, you're just laughing. So good. Imperial Propaganda. Again, this card is amazing. Uh, especially if your opponent is trying to get off object, and, um, I think there's one or two objectives which require um, the player to have um, a, a certain, you know, have a full, a full region 
of uh, loyalty. So this just completely spits in the face of that. Make an example. It's too difficult to pull this off. Like, um, Lure of the Dark Side just does this so much better. However, there are some instances where, you know, you set up a combination of cards or, you know, you can pull, you can pull this off, but mm, most of the time I think it's just too cumbersome to do so and not worth the effort. Ah, yes, of course, Lure of the Dark Side. Incredible, incredible card. You playing this card gives a leader swing of two. You steal one of the leaders and you get, and, and you know, they go down the leader, you go up a leader. Card is so, so good. Um, you know, if you get, if you draw this early, you want to, you want to get this off as soon as you can, basically. Maximize that advantage. And then, uh, signature intel missions. Probe droid initiative. Fantastic card. Um... I try and hold on to this until I hopefully recruit Admiral Ozel, because being able to draw four probes instead of two is just, you know, it, to be fair, drawing two probes is good. Drawing four is just ridiculous. You speed up your game by two turns. It's so good. Such a good card. Long range probe? Eh, this is okay. It's not bad. Um, you've got two, I mean, I, I essentially think of this as a third copy of, um, deployment uh, when you're trying to find the base. Uh, there, there can be situations where you, you know, you maybe have like a 50% chance of where the base is. This is, this is good in those situations. Uh, maybe also uh, there's a location that's kind of out of your way to get to. You could get there but you'd be moving your fleet in the opposite direction from where you would like to go for example. This is also this is good for those situations, you know, just tick it off the list. And it's risk-free in terms of um, deployment. You know, if you do find the base, you're you are at risk of getting an untimely demise by a confrontation. This won't initiate any battles, so it's safer to to um, you know to scout out where the base is. Secure the plans. This is this is good. It's a good card. Don't get me wrong. It's sneaky good though. Like. I, I play this on the whim, like, if I got the opportunity to play it, I will. Obviously, if I know my opponent is definitely, like, you know, got the Death Star in their, in their sights, then, you know, I'll play this. But most of the time I play it, it's, it's kind of like on the whim. I'm like, well, you know, I might as well play this mission, because I don't have much else better to do. And, you know, just in case, it's, it's, a, it's a nice bit of security to have. And, you know, once you play this, it becomes very difficult for the Rebel player to target the Death Star. Ideally though, you want to play this when the um, Rebel player already has drawn into the Death Star. If you play this too early on, then the Rebel player can just um, scry the Death Star plans away via an infiltration. The best scenario is when they already have the Death Star plans in their hand and then you play this, you know, you, you just, you've just taken out one of the objectives. You've just neutered one of the objectives. That's the best case scenario for playing this card. Uh, interrogation Droid. Incredible. Just such an incredible card. Um, one of the best cards. Probably, mm, yeah, probably the best card for finding the, um, the rebel base when you're playing with the expansion deck, which you should be doing. There's n the apart from carbon freezing, that's probably the only card you're gonna miss by playing the expansion deck for the Imperials. So the only other card that trumps this, which is from the base set, is um, what's it called homing beacon. Apologies for the rain. It's uh, yeah, British weather for you. But anyway, we will we will press on. Yeah, um, Homing Beacon's probably the only card that's better than this for finding the base. Uh, let's move on to... Oh, yeah, this. <laughs> Discredit Rebellion. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, what, what, what can I even say about this? this? This card is, honestly, it's such a joke card. I, I don't like it at all. Uh, but having said that, I have actually um, played this with, uh, where is he, where is he, where is he, with, with um, Admiral Motti and managed to make the Rebel player lose a reputation because they rolled a lightsaber, it's quite nice. I mean, I think there's about 
a 38% chance, I think, if you have Admiral Motti do the mission, of them losing a reputation. You know, it's, it's one of those missions where if I really don't have much else to do, then yeah, I'll, I'll play it, but, you know, it's, it's not great. It's not a great mission. I'll be, I'll be straight up. And now onto the, the generic missions. We have two copies of Exploit Weakness. This is a good card. Um, being able to randomly take one of your... You get to see the objective as well. Randomly reveal an objective, place it back on top of the deck. It's solid. Ideally, you want to play this after your opponent has done an infiltration. The risk with that, though, is that if um, the opponent rescues the leader, their captured leader first, then you might miss the boat and not be able to play this card at all. It's a risk versus reward type thing. But yeah, the best case scenario, you play it after they've infiltrated. Break their will. Yeah, this card, this card, it's a good card. The effect is good. It's nice that they have a fail safe to, for, to return to your hand. Whoa, it's really pulling down now. Okay, I'm gonna have to shout a little bit. But the, uh, the thing is, like I said earlier, Imperials are strong on fists. Rebels are not. So counting all skill icons plays against the, this card. It would have been so much better if it was just, you know, you just look at the fists when, when determining the success of the mission. The effect is decent though, you know, being able to wipe a region off the board, you know, that will really quicken your search. So it is a good card. Carbon freezing is undoubtedly superior, but, you know, it's, it's not terrible. It's not a terrible replacement. Two copies of deployment. This is good for... I, I mainly use this card to try and find the base. Um, it's also good for putting, deploying units into remote systems, building a shield bunker, and then setting up an Imperial Might. I'll talk more about that later, but yeah, one of the key cards for setting up that combo is deployment. Message from High Command, amazing. Um, you know, you, get, you gain loyalty in the system and you get your leader, leaders potentially back to your leader pool. You know, you can really screw with, um, with the uh, rebel player with this card. You can deceive them, you can make them think that you've got no more leaders to move around, but then bam, suddenly you've returned one or two back to your leader pool, you know, you're ready to go. Very solid card. And finally, the intel ones. Um, two copies of stolen intel. You know, this is a good card. It's, it's subtle. You know, drawing one probe, yeah, it doesn't seem like much, but, you know, it can rack up. It can be the difference when you get to those later stages of the game. And the ability to steal an opponent, uh, to discard an opponent's um, mission is, is, it's good. It's underrated. It is a good ability. Uh, if your if the rebel player is using the expansion missions, try and hold on to this until they've potentially played their reconnaissance. So you can discard their the mission they've taken back. So, you know, you, you neutralize their, their move and you draw a probe. That's very solid if you can pull that off. Rare the bait. This is good. Um, it can be a little bit awkward to play if you've got the, if you capture the leader in a, um, in a system where you don't have many units. But being able to weaken the forces on the rebel base is so worthwhile. So it's, it's, it's worth setting this up, you know, mid to late game, trying to pull this card off. You know, you can take, you can take away two of their um, uh, air speeders and suddenly you don't have to worry about tow cables anymore. So it's, it's strong for that. Uh, you can also maybe remove one of their Mon Cal cruisers. That can make a big difference for the space battle. You know, things like that. The card has, it's, it's a good card, a lot of potential. Uh, two copies of Imperial Might. I mean, this is a game-ending, amazing card. Uh, the Imperials have needed this, a card like this for so long. I mean, they, they had the one copy of Planetary Conquest, but this really, and the Shield Bunkers in general, have been much needed mechanics for the Imperial player. So, the idea with this is, um, you know, 
the shield bunkers allow you to deploy remote systems. So let's just say that the, the rebel base was in Endor. You know, I've, I don't know, moved some force over to um, Bespin. But then the uh, rebel player sabotages